Here we'll prove and then use what's called the law of sines, which relates a triangle's sides and angles. We'll prove it using this triangle here, whose sides we'll call lowercase a, b, and c. Let's say this angle opposite side A has measure uppercase A. Similarly, this angle opposite side B has measure uppercase B, and this angle opposite side C has measure uppercase C. Let's not worry about side and angle C for now. We'll come back to them later. For now, let's draw in an altitude for this triangle, which runs from this corner, or vertex, up here, down to this side, making two right angles over here and over here. We've split our original triangle into two right triangles, this one on the left and this one on the right. Why don't you pick one of these to look at first? Okay, let's look at the triangle on the right first, which has a hypotenuse of length b, and this angle over here is uppercase a. Let's call the height of this triangle h, and notice that this height is the opposite side from the angle a in this right triangle. So in terms of side b and angle a, what's h? Your answer should have a trig function in it, and if you want to review how to use trigonometry to find the legs of right triangles, click down here instead. Precisely, this side is opposite angle A, so its length is B times the sine of A. Let's hold on to this expression for the height down here. Now notice that this other right triangle has the same height H, so try finding another expression for H but now in terms of this side length A and this angle B. Nicely done. This side is opposite from angle B, so it has length A times the sine of B. So you found two expressions for the height of this triangle using the right triangles on the left and right of this altitude. So these two expressions for H must also be equal to each other. And so A times the sine of angle B equals B times the sine of angle A. Try rearranging this equation so that you have A over the sine of angle A on the left. What expression do you get for the right side of this equation? And make sure you're careful about typing upper and lower case variables. Exactly, so A over the sine of angle A equals B over the sine of angle B. Let's throw side C and angle C back into the mix. How are they related to these expressions? To find out, let's flip this triangle over. And at this point, let's not worry about side or angle A, and let's draw in another altitude, so we again have two right triangles. Looking at the right triangle on the left, we can see that its height is opposite from angle C, and the hypotenuse is B, so the height is B times the sine of angle C. And looking at the triangle on the right, it has the same height, and its length is C times the sine of angle B. So B times the sine of angle C equals C times the sine of angle B. If you rearrange this equation, you should be able to find another expression in terms of side C and angle C that equals this expression over here. Excellent. So for our triangle here, A over the sine of angle A equals B over the sine of angle B, and these are both also equal to C over the sine of angle C. This whole equation is the law of sines, and it's true for every triangle. Here's another way to think about it. The law of sines says to look at angles and their opposite sides. So we have this angle and its opposite side, this second angle and its opposite side, and this third angle and its opposite side. If you divide the length of each side by the sine of its opposite angle, you'll get the same number all three times. Let's try out a few practice problems to get the hang of the law of sines. Here's a triangle, and let's suppose this angle is 60 degrees, and its opposite side has length 10. Meanwhile, this angle over here is 80 degrees. How long is this side over here, which is opposite the 80 degree angle? Round your answer to one decimal place. Great work! You used the law of sines and found that this side has a length of about 11.4. Now let's see if we can figure out the remaining angle and side of this triangle. You already know two of the angles, so what's the measure of this third angle down here? Right, this third angle is 40 degrees. Now see if you can apply the law of sines again to find the length of the side opposite the 40 degree angle, and round your answer to one decimal place. Brilliant! 
So this side of the triangle has a length of about 7.4. Just to review what you did here, you started with a triangle where you only knew two angles and a side, and you were able to figure out all the remaining sides and angles. You saw that you already knew one angle and its opposite side, so using the law of sines, you found the side opposite the 80 degree angle. Then, because you knew two angles of the triangle, you were able to find the third angle. And then you used the law of sines again to find the remaining side opposite this third angle. So the law of sines is a powerful tool that lets you find the remaining sides and angles of triangles when you only know a few of them. In later lessons, you'll discover real world applications for the law of sines, and you'll prove that it even works for obtuse triangles, meaning triangles with an angle greater than 90 degrees. Here we'll look at an example of triangulation, a real world application of the law of sines. With triangulation, engineers are able to calculate distances using angles. So let's get started. Suppose we're looking down on a shoreline in the evening, and there are two lighthouses that are 10 miles apart. A sailboat approaches the shore and is seen by the operators in both lighthouses. The two lighthouses and the boat form a triangle. Now in this lighthouse, the operator sees that there's a 50 degree angle between the boat and the other lighthouse. In other words, imagine you're standing in this lighthouse and looking straight at the boat. If you turn 50 degrees in this direction, then you'll be looking straight at the other lighthouse. Meanwhile, the operator in this lighthouse measures a 60 degree angle between the boat and the first lighthouse. Now the operators are in radio communication, so now they both know these two angles, and they also know the lighthouses are 10 miles apart. Using the law of signs, they're able to figure out exactly how far the boat is from the shore based on this information. If you're up to the challenge, then try finding this distance. If you're not sure, then no worries. Click over here, and we'll work through this problem together. Okay, great. To get started, why don't you first find the measure of this angle up here? If you're not sure what it is, click down here instead. Right, this angle is 70 degrees. Next, try finding the distance of this side of the triangle, rounding your answer to two decimal places. Using the law of sines is a good way to go, because you already know this angle here and its opposite side, and the side we're solving for is opposite the 60 degree angle over here. If you'd like to review the law of sines instead, then click up here. Excellent work! So this side is approximately 9.22 miles. Next, try finding the length of this side here, again rounding your answer to two decimal places. You'll want to use the law of sines again, and notice that this side is opposite the 50 degree angle. Nicely done! This side is approximately 8.15 miles. So now it's time to calculate how far this boat is from the shore. You can find it using this right triangle over here, with hypotenuse 9.22 and an angle of 50 degrees, and the distance you're solving for is opposite from the 50 degree angle. You could also use this right triangle over here, with hypotenuse 8.15 and an angle of 60 degrees. Either way, you should get the same answer, and be sure to round it to two decimal places. To review, click here instead. Great work! This boat is about 7.06 miles from the shore. So now that you solved this numerical example, let's come up with a general formula for this distance. Let L represent the distance between the lighthouses. We'll call this angle over here A, and we'll call this angle B, and we're trying to solve for the distance D. So what is D in terms of L, A, and B? If you're not sure, click over here, and we'll work through this problem together. Okay, sounds good. Just like with the numerical example, we can use the law of sines to solve this algebraic problem. But first, what's the measure of this angle up here in terms of the triangle's other two angles, A and B? Right, this angle is 180 degrees minus A minus B. Next, we'll be using the law of sines. The angle you just found, 180 minus A minus B, is opposite the side of length L. So use the law of sines to find the length of this side over here, which is opposite from angle A. Impressive work! 
So the length of this side is L times the sine of A divided by the sine of 180 minus A minus B. And so, finally, use this right triangle to determine how far the boat is from the shore in terms of A, B, and L. Very well done. So this distance between the boat and the shore is L times the sine of A times the sine of B divided by the sine of 180 degrees minus A minus B. Now rather than working through the law of sines again, why don't you try using this formula you just found to solve one final numerical example. Suppose the boat had moved over here. The distance between the lighthouses has not changed from before. It's still 10 miles. But now this angle at the left lighthouse is 75 degrees, while the angle at the right lighthouse is 45 degrees. So according to your formula, just how far is the boat from shore now?